you plot w u against the inverse of u, one over u, you will get a very, very specific graph. I'll show this to you. So here is, uh, you need to do it on a log log paper. It needs to be oriented correctly, right? The big squares to the left, small squares to the right, big squares to the bottom, small things to the top, right? That's a correct orientation. How would I plot this? So you plot all the WU values from the table right there on the y-axis and you would plot on this graph all the u values as inverse as one over u we need to do a little bit of calculation here on the x-axis and then you basically take this table that i've just shown you and transfer it to this piece of graph paper and i've done it for you and i draw the curve and you get something like this and lubin told Ties, this curve is a constant. It will never change. These are the set values, the constant values plotted against each other in this manner. And the reason why we pl plot the inverse against the WU value becomes apparent when I show you the solution of how to solve the pumping problem. So you can create that graph and put it in your pocket because it will never change and this becomes your reference standard. That is your reference standard right there. So how does that graph, don't forget about it, how does this graph help us solve the non-steady state pumping? Okay. Well, Let's go to some pumping data and show you how we can practically use the Tice equation and a solution. Right now, remember this curve is a constant; it will never change. You can create this graph. You need to do it only once, and then you have this constant graph always as part of your solution tools. All right. right. So now we're going to go to the practical application. The absolutely stunning way how Lubin and Tice solved this non-equilibrium problem. So for that to work, you need to have some pumping data, right? So first of all, then and that is very important. And he told, he told this to Tice as well. He says, you need to use a graph paper if the same size, physical size, as the the paper you plotted your standard Tice curve that um, WU um, versus one over U inverse of U. So the, the graph paper needs to be the same size, physical the same size, and the same inches in one direction and, and the same inches in the other direction. It's very important. So we're gonna use the same size graph paper and what we're going to do now is we're going to plot delta H in one of the observation uh, wells. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be um, plotted on the y-axis. And T is no longer distance. He basically abandoned distance completely. He said it doesn't matter. Can you use any observation well itself? In some instances, you can even use it on the pumping well itself. Then um, you can get storativity. But if you have an observation well, um, you now plot a series of values. Let's you draw down how much water does my water level drop over a specific period of time. Now, those of you who have been dinking around with your um, percolation test, that sounds incredibly familiar, doesn't it? Okay, so um, you would use your delta H, your drawdown on the um, y-axis and the time since your pumping started on the x-axis that's how you would set up your graph the graph paper here is exactly the same size this physical graph paper as your tice curve graph paper where you plotted the tice curve on okay now 
let's see we have some data. We go to one observation well. This well is 1,000 meters away from my pumping well. And I measure my drawdown, my drop in water level, kind of what you're doing, you're practicing right now, your drop in water level in certain time intervals. You know, how uh, much did it drop uh, from a datum? So let's say one hour after I turned the pump on in my observation well, I dropped to by 0 0.05 meters uh, from the resting um, hydraulic head. After seven hours, the drop had increased to 0 0.7 meters from the from the resting point. After 10 hours to 0 0.9 meters and after 100 hours to 2.8 meters. Four data points kind of gives me some idea I can collect more. I just need to write down what my what my drop would be after a certain time of pumping. Now, 100 hours, yeah, 24, 24, 24, 24, like five days a week of pumping or something like that, five days. Okay, what's next? We're going to plot these data points just like that. Okay, so now we have two graphs. We have one with our WU versus inverse over U plot. And we have another one, same size graph paper. And they need to be separate. You cannot put them both together on one graph paper. You need to have two graph papers to do this. And we have one graph paper with our data points from my well test on um, uh, one observation well. Once I have done that, I now come up with the slickest solution ever. So what you do is take your constant graph, the WU, you can see this here, over 1 over U, and you affix it either to a light table. I've used a light table. You can also glue it to a window. It doesn't matter. So sun shines through. So I'll make sure that this um, that is set up. So we take one graph and make sure it doesn't wiggle anymore. Put it down. My fat hands with a scotch tape. Okay. Then you take the graph with your data points and you overlay it. Now you try to match the data points to this red curve, to your W curve, but you cannot, and I'm doing this wrong here, you cannot tilt it. These two graphs need to be in parallel. So your lines need to be parallel. So you need to move it up and down, left and right, until you get the best match possible with the lines being parallel. And I think I did a pretty good job here with lining them up. So my data points here match. And then once I got the data points match, I make sure my paper doesn't blow away or wiggle. I affix it again with some tape so they don't wiggle. Let's do this right now, right real quick here. Um, make sure the lines are parallel. These papers don't wiggle. You can see that here. Now I have two graphs on top of one another. Now I'm going to pick a data point, any data point that is common to both of these graph papers. doesn't even have to be on a line. I pick a data point, and what I do is I look at my constant graph, the, the WU over inverse of U, and I took the two ones, which makes the calculations a little easier. So when I pick this data point, but it doesn't have to be that one. You can pick any data point you want. I kind of mark it right there, right? That is the, on that graph below, that is the one, two, one, right there. And uh, on the, of course, I marked it on the on the graph on top. I just want to make sure that I don't forget this data point. I can kind of fold the tail back and put the same data point on the lower graph right there as well. That was the one one point. I like to use ones or the tens because it makes the math a little bit easier as we go ahead. But now I have a data point on both graphs. So let me reiterate this a little bit. You have your plot right there. You match it with the Tice curve, keeping all the lines parallel. Very important. Don't tilt the graph because my points fit better. Even if they fit better, if you tilt it, you're not allowed to do this. Keep the lines parallel. Now, here, 
it's kind of cool. Both of these graphs, you know, at least on the Y uh, di dimension, they seem to match up quite nicely. But it doesn't have to be that this way. I mean, um, you could even be offset in the Y direction and have these graphs overlay something like, you know, something like this. And they have a certain area then in common. But this one worked out. They they kind of have at least in the Y direction, they they match up. Um, from that point to that point. But it doesn't have to be this way. As long as these data points match up and these lines are all in parallel, which they are between the two graphs. Now, remember I marked a spot there. You pick a spot and we use this one, the 1-1 one, one for the WU over the inverse of U graph. Why is this spot important? And by the way, it doesn't matter which point you pick as long as these graphs overlay and match the data points, match a curve. Because now you can do something insane. And that was a big breakthrough. You can read off four data points or two data pairs. You can now get the values for WU and one over U, as well as the values for delta H and T. These delta H and T values read off from that point correspond with the analog of WU and one over U on the other graph. So how would I record it? You know, not to, not to make it not too confusing. So my WU has a value of one. My one over U in this case has a value of one. Now I need to go to the other graph at this point because my overlay matches, right? My delta H is a 1.1, so I can do this one. Here's my one. It's hard to see. That's my blue line, right? That would be a two, so it's a little bit above the blue line, so this is a 1.1. And uh, what else can I read? Oh, the time on the on the blue line right here. Uh, the time, of course, goes in this direction. So for that one, I, and it's hard to, it's confusing because the brown graph is underneath it. The... Uh, um, blue graph is on top, so I need to read the blue graph value of this one right now. And this is, of course, in hours down there. So this is uh, one um, and two, and it's got about 2.3 hours. I would read this one off. And that is the values of these data points for both of these graphs. Now, remember the equations I showed you at the beginning. But I said, I don't know what the U and W U's are for this equation. Now you know. Here's your values. You can plug it right in. No calculation necessary. Nothing strange. You just need to match those two graphs up and pick a common point. Now you may say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. What if I would have picked this point? Would have worked too. You would have gotten different delta H and different T and different W U's and different uh, in inverse of the U values, and I would have still solved. What if I would have picked the point directly on the graph? It doesn't matter as long as that point can be read off on both graphs. So you cannot use this point because that would be only in the blue graph, or you cannot use this point because it would be only on the brown graph. It needs to be on both graphs. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be on the curve. You pick whatever you like. Can use a blow dart and do it by chance, you know, as long as it lands in an overlapping area of both graphs, you are good.